Hey, hey, this is Controller Cast, episode number one. Um, my name is Drew Weisenborn, and I am joined today by two good friends, Cassie Cole and Stephen Bowen. How are you guys doing today? Good. Doing all right. Good. Doing all right. Any better wouldn't do, Drew. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So this is all about video games. Um, today we're going to be covering console gaming, specifically, and uh, before I get started, I just want to say um, thank you all for listening to the podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And I want to say, if you also would like to, you can follow me on YouTube at TP Wising Game. Uh, Steven also has a small YouTube channel. And you are a biology major, right? I am a bio yeah. major. Um, okay. Please do not think that me just as a bio major does not discredit my knowledge of gaming. No, that must mean you're super smart. <laughs> no, it does not mean I'm super smart. I'm actually kind of an idiot when it comes to sciences. You haven't failed yet. I haven't failed yet. That is very true. That is very true. Yeah. So w- w- us both having experience on, you know, gaming and also gaming on YouTube for both of us. So I think this would be a great, you know, kind of mesh of like experiences because Cassie, I know you do not have too much experience with video games. You didn't grow up playing video games, especially I did not, not. No. Yeah, especially not on consoles. I think you've probably what played more like mobile games than anything. Right, you played mobile games like I in like high school. farming games. Okay, so I would actually <laughs> like to have you on the episode where oh, I talk so about like more. classic Facebook gaming. <gasps> yes, like Farmville. I didn't do Farmville. You didn't do Farmville. I did a game How called, did you not I do Farmville? I did a game called Heyday on my phone. Oh. It was so fun. Do mobile gaming. Oh, I've got recommendations too. Yeah, then, by all means, we'll do that. But today we're focusing on um, console gaming. So. I, this is going to be basically going over the history of consoles from different companies and some other inf- inf- uh, information about them. Um, I think I'm going to be mainly focusing on Nintendo consoles just because that's the one that I think a lot of people are familiar with. It's the one I'm the most familiar with and the ones I grew up with. Um, so, But I'm going to be going over all of them. And I'm going to start with um, the uh, the first ever video game console ever made, which is called um, the Magnavox Odyssey. Um, it was released in 1972. And um, it's... It was this really janky looking. Actually, kind of looks like this this Roadcaster. Actually, it was um, a really weird looking console, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and it actually came with cards, dice, like boards, and like fake money and stuff. It's like uh, to like to go with the games that you would play on them. Um, so you know, um, so I don't know. I would pull up a picture. I'm not sure. I do have a picture. I pulled up a picture. Man, that thing does look really weird. Do you see that, Cassie? You it's got taking a look. It, where? Um, the Magnavox Odyssey. Oh, it does look interesting. Made in 1972. It looks like one of those like computers you'll see on like a spaceship, kind of. Oh my god, you're so right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it looks like a classic 80s console. It does. It does. Like something you would see in like Star Like Trek, a sci-fi honestly, console. Yeah. But it mm-hmm. also has that classic box with the joy stick. Yes, yes. You know, it's kind of like the arcade games. Uh, well, I mean, I guess there are other companies that base their consoles off of those more, but... Oops. Um, so, yeah. I guess another thing, uh, the Atari. The Atari. Have you yeah. guys... You've heard of the Atari, Cassie? Have you heard of the Atari? I have played I'm on Atari. Oh, that's awesome. You know, y- you, know, you know what Pong is, right, Cassie? Yes. That's where that's where Pong was started. It was on the Atari. Oh! Actually, the first console that came out was called, like, Home Pong, wasn't it? It, it was looks the, like yeah. a cassette it tape. It was literally a console that was literally made to play Pong. That was the only you game You only on played Pong. Yeah, and that I mean that people that kept people entertained for the Be beginning there. of the because uh, that was made in 1977. Wow, Pong so. is a very fun game though. Yeah, don't it, discredit Pong. You can't, and there's like a bunch of different versions of it now, of course, because it's been remastered and like people are trying to bring that back. Um, bring then, back the classics. So Atari made consoles from 1977 until 1996, ending with the Atari Jaguar. Um, so their most recent console was made in 1960, 1996, I believe. Um, so they've come a long way. Um, I don't know too much about the Atari. I've never played any of the systems. I, I actually, I, I've, I think I actually might have played on an Atari Jaguar once. I can't remember. It wasn't, it's not mine. It was, uh, I think it might have been at some sort of showcase somewhere. This is, uh, this isn't helping the conversation. I'm being very <laughs> vague, but like. Um, yeah, have you? So you said you have, right? I've played on a classic Atari where we literally just played Pong. Um, and how was this, that? 
Oh my god, it was so janky. Uh, I it was the amount of input lag on that console was noticeably different. It was there was a lot of input lag. Oh really? Um, compared to you know consoles today, where we really focus on diminishing the input lag so that your input or your you know your I guess your hand motions. Right. On the console and the uh, controllers mimic almost to the T what the image is on the screen. No, this is you push it forward, it moves forward. Right, right. You pull it back, it goes down. It is a noticeable lag. And I think that's something that's like, that's definitely been kind of improved as like, that's gradually improved um, from like, from like, you know, the the old consoles to the new ones and especially with the consoles nowadays having bluetooth technology with wireless controllers i think it's definitely an improvement even the wireless ones being like having little to no latency mm-hmm. with their with your input to action and game you know difference um i know there are some like wireless ones that are that have a little bit of impact lag but there are some wireless controllers that i've used on like Let's say some of the, some of the newer consoles that have even like less input lag than some wired controllers. Like seriously, yeah, you can so. be amazed by some of the controllers, especially when Bluetooth controllers first came out. There were some Bluetooth controllers that had no lag. Obviously, you would expect there to be some lag when the Bluetooth controllers first came out compared to regular uh, wired controllers, because of course it's new technology. It doesn't have the same kind of system that a wired controller has. It doesn't have that physical contact that mm-hmm. can instantly transfer the data. It has to go over Bluetooth. But it was still really fast compared yeah. to, um, you know, some wired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess another company, Sega. Um, have Sega. You, you guys, yep, yep. Do you know Sega? Have you heard of Sega? Drew, I really don't know anything. <laughs> okay. I know well, like Nintendo, that's it. Yeah. Well, um, so yeah, Sega started with the SG-1000. Um, that was in 1984 when they designed that console. I've never, I had never heard of that. I'm not too familiar with Sega. Um, uh, and then their most recent console was made in 1988 called Sega Dreamcast. I know um, of the Sega Dreamcast. I've seen it. I've never played on one. Yeah, I think I've seen it too. I've seen it too. Do you want to pull up a picture um, real quick? I, I would, but I'm kind of farther away from you guys. Yeah, so. if so I remember, the Sega Dreamcast has one of those. It's 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 an interesting design. Or 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 actually, you know what? First, um, pull up a picture of the SG-1000. Ooh, okay, okay. The, yeah. the first Sega um, console made in 1984. So what causes these companies to stop producing, like Atari and Sega? Like you said, they stopped in like the 90s and the 80s. What stops them from continuing to produce? Well, I think it's a combination of things. Um, but I think mainly it's just people stop buying their products. Um, but and I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with why they don't put out any more consoles. But Probably you know, just new technology comes out, uh, new systems, and they really can't you know, upgrade the console because it's in people's homes, so they just released the new edition. Yeah. The Sega one SG-1000 has that classic cartridge slot at the top. Yep. You know, that classic cartridge. Have See, you ever? I, I've seen that, yeah. I've have you, have that. you ever played where you have to, you know, blow into the cartridge yeah. a good minute, two minute, and then slam it in forcefully? Like you're almost about to break the thing. Yeah, no. Just I'm, to get the game to play. And we'll go over this in a little bit with the Nintendo consoles, but like like the original like Nintendo console, like we'll go over it. But yeah, that's where you have to do that stuff. And I've gotten the experience to do it because my brother has one of those old consoles. Because a lot of those, a lot of these consoles are older than we are, which is kind of fun to think about. Yeah. So did you show Cassie that picture of the Sega SG one thousand? It's okay. I can look it up. Okay. Unless you have it open. He has it open. It looks old. Yeah. Look, it also looks like a cassette tape. Yeah, thank now, you for your input. <laughs> now now bring up the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast, it looks more like a PS1. If I had to if I had to make a comparison, the the Dreamcast looks v- similar to a 
uh, PS1 in the main console design. Mm-hmm. The controller, no. The controller even has a little, little screen on it, which is interesting to see because most controllers in these days did not have any kind of, you know... No, they didn't have... No like, one even thought about putting a screen on a controller, and then Sega does this. The first PlayStation came out in 1984. Or, no, it came out in 1994. Sorry, my bad. Um, and the Dreamcast came out in 1988. So Interesting. So, PS1 came after. Um, and while we're on the topic of PlayStation, they, they made consoles um, until 2013, which is which was when they released the PlayStation 4. So um, I guess PlayStation wasn't as creative with their names, with their consoles. They were just named PS1 and PS2, you know. Yeah. PS4 um, in 2013, which is not too far away. I mean, we've kind of recently hit that point where, or in the past two decades, uh, console creators have just been making, or... Yeah, the companies, they would just name their console the next generation. So, one, two, three, four. Microsoft or Xbox uh, definitely did not follow that scheme because it had the Xbox, the original Xbox. Yes, yeah, Xbox then and the Xbox 360. Um, 360 and then, and Xbox then the one. one. And what? now the X. And okay. technically, the Xbox Series S. Um, there's a lot of memes coming out about those consoles. Where the mm. Xbox Series X just looks like a f- refrigerator. Mm, oh, oh, actually, actually, I know what you're talking about. Now you understand. Yes. Now you're getting it. I'm not. I've never owned an Xbox or any any of the Xboxes or PlayStation. So, but I've I've seen both, and I've had friends that have owned both. So I've gotten some experience, you know, mm-hmm. messing around with those. Um, but I yeah. Um, I guess the next topic is, or yeah, the next topic would be. I guess the Nintendo consoles, which is what I mainly wanted to talk about, um, because a lot of people were familiar with them, and personally for me, I'm the most familiar with them because that's those that's what I grew up with was the Nintendo consoles, um, but the first Nintendo console was uh, Color TV. It was Color TV um, in 1977? They came out with Color TV, um, or I think it was called called Color TV Game. I am unfamiliar with any of this. Oh, my my Nintendo knowledge. This is great. My <laughs> Nintendo knowledge goes from, you know, the Game Boy Color. Did you own a Game Boy Color? I did own a Game Boy Color. I actually owned one of the the clear ones, the see-through ones. Um and then it broke. I was very sad oh, when that day happened. Okay. I wanted to get a DS, but I just never pulled the trigger on buying a DS. Um I own a Wii I use, well, I still own a Wii, but the Wii is technically broken. That is why I have yet to set it up because the disc reader in the Wii is broken. Oh, that would happen to me a lot. Um, our first Wii that we had broke, um, because of that reason. Um, but yeah, fa- riding back time a little bit, we had they had that in nineteen seventy seven. We had the next console called Game and Watch, um, which was in. Is that where that Nintendo character is from? The, yes, the Mr. Game Watch. Yeah. yeah. So basically, ah. actually, I'll t- I'll tell you about that in a sec. There are there are a few games on there, um, but the console itself uh, was released in 1991, um, and for everyone who plays Smash Bros. knows, Mr. Game and Watch is a character from the Game and Watch series. Um, so those games were basically they looked exactly like that character. So all those games were all were a bunch of those characters like this, these black and white, like 2d flat characters that had like these stop motion, like stop motion, um, you know, animations. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were like kind of little quirky games. Um, I'm not too familiar with them. I've never played one myself. Um, but that's kind of the gist of it. Have you ever played a game and watch? I've played a game and watch game through emulation online, which not Hmm. the most legal thing to do technically. Right. (laughs) Don't try this at home, kids. Don't 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 do that at home. Technically, emulation of games currently is illegal in mm-hmm. some yes, places. Um, but yeah, I I have played game and watch games before, just passively because I was kind of interested in playing the games and wanting to know where he actually came from. Because I learned first learned about game and watch in Super Smash Bros. Mm-hmm. And Same here. That's that right. is. 
that's what piqued my interest. So I wanted to learn more, so I decided to look up, and uh, I played some of his games. So how did they go? Like, how was your experience playing those games? It was... Do you remember? It was... It wasn't... I don't know how to... I mean, it was like a classic game that you think of, it like a 2D... I don't want to say 2D platformer kind of game, but that's kind of like what it was. Um, or at least some of them were 2D platformers. Um, there was one game I remember. It was kind of like you were avoiding things falling from the sky. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to remember the games. No, it's okay. Oh, what? Do you know approximately how long ago you did that? This was a good five, six years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's been a hot minute. Mm hmm. I think the Game & Watch was cool. Um, I think it had a cool design. Um, and actually, do you want to pull it? Um, do, actually, maybe since you both have played Super Smash Bros. before, do you know the Game & Watch stage on Super Smash Bros.? Yes. Maybe. I've probably oh, seen it's it. It's literally, it's literally, the stage is literally like the controller. It's literally like the, the console. And you're inside the console. Here, pull up a picture. I'm, I'm Googling it, too. Yeah, just pull up like... Google picture like the Game Watch stage from Smash Bros. Oh. Or just yeah, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Does it look familiar? Yeah. Hey Drew. That's what it looked like. I looked up Game and Watch and I clicked the very first image. It brought me to eBay. You want to know how much a Game and Watch console goes for or I handheld? I can't imagine right now because it's so vintage. What? Eight thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. <laughs> wow. On eBay. Yeah. A hundred percent functional. Yeah. And that's unused or it's or probably used. It's probably used. Yeah. Um yeah, it's used. It's used, but it still has all the stickers on it. Uh the screen still works fine. Um all the screws are still there. It's probably been refurbished refurbished and then, you know, never touched again after it's been used. Yeah. I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that's what it looked like. And you know, like all the like you know, all those little beeping sounds that Mr. Game Watch makes. That's what the games made. That's what yeah. The, that's all the games were just a bunch of these beeps. <laughs> that's what the soundtrack consisted of. Um, but I guess yeah. After the Game Watch, um, came uh, a big one: the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, that uh, was in 1983 when that was released, and it was first released in Japan as the Ninten the Nintendo Famicom. They're not this, they're the same system. They have like the, you know the same functionality, but the Famicom was a red and like white. Yeah, yeah. The Famicom is a lot smaller than the NES. Yeah, the NES has that classic kind of blocky look. Like very imagine blocky. A, like you kind of imagine a Wii. It kind of looks like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, horizontal. The Famicom literally looks something out of a Japanese anime. If they were imagining a gaming console, that's what they, that's what they use in some animes. I'm 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 sure. Oh, probably. Um, but or something like that. But like you know, and that's you know that's where you know you you get the game cards that are about this big. Um. And oh like, yeah, you, you, the cartridges. Yeah, they the cartridges. Have to slam you, into there. You slam them into there. Um, and sometimes so, you know sometimes it doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to blow into it. Mm -hmm. Um, to to put it in, and you know those those. Are, you know, those are the days. I, I I wasn't even around when that console was it came out. It was my brother um has a NAS. He has he has a few of the the old Nintendo system, uh, that he um lent to us for a little while, and then he recently took them back. It was very sad. I got um one of them to work once, and it was cool to play on it because like it was it was definitely a different feel because you know like a lot of the new newer consoles nowadays have like, you know, applications where you can play the old games. Like on the Nintendo Switch, you can play like the old NES games, but it's not it's not the same. No, it never um, is the same. Because the controllers, you know, the Divinity controllers are different. Um, it, it just it's, it's not as clear of a picture when you're looking at it. It's just you know it's the and you know it, you don't you don't get the having to blow into the cartridge and slam it into the thing. Like that's it's all part of that experience. I will say I have I actually have played. I know I said I have I've only played on you know like the Wii and a Game Boy and that, but I actually have played on an NES. Um, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't my own. It was a friend's that I went over at his place and it was technically his dad's, uh, but he now played on it. And I remember playing on the NES and it was a lot of fun playing on that. And we played Super Mario 3. 
Mm, that's think, a that's a huge title. Yeah, Super Mario Three we played on the NES. I still think Super Mario Brothers Three is one of the best um, Mario Bros. games. Period. Oh, I agree. Um, I still need to play that. If, if you guys, uh, you started right? No, we were only finishing if, two. Okay. Well, if you, and if if, if everyone can't tell, we I'm will. a huge I'm a huge Mario fan. I grew up playing Mario games, so I've stuck with it. Um, but yeah. Several big titles on the NES, you know, like Donkey Kong, just based on the original arcade, you know, mm-hmm. the arcade game Donkey Kong. Um, Duck Hunt, Castlevania. Ice Climbers. Ice Climbers, Legends of Zelda, and then, of course, Super, the Super Mario Brothers, of course, which, which you know, later on, you know, sprouted many different versions of the game and uh, in later consoles to come and is still going. Um, after that, they released the Game Boy, in 1989, which was their, which was a handheld one. Yeah, yeah, and you know what the game. You guys know what the game. You know what the Game Boy looks like, Cassie. I think so. I, I will look it up just to refresh. Look myself. up the yeah Nintendo Game Boy, um, handheld console. It's it's also pretty yeah, blocky. Yeah, I have seen this. Yeah, pretty blocky. I remember playing. I think Pokemon Emerald on the Game Boy. Is that what Pokemon Emerald was on the Game Boy? I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not a huge Pokemon fan. So, um, I w- Pokemon is one of the first games I played, and I know. I know uh, people will hate me for that, but I'm not. I never got into Pokemon that much, really. True. I don't hate you. I'm I know. Just Steven. disappointed. Just disappointed. After the Game Boy, they released another. Oh, they released the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the, or the SNES for short. Um, which was when they transferred over from 8-bit console, you know, which was the NES, to 16-bit, um, which is a huge improvement visually because, you know, um, with the NES and, like, you know, I mean, the Game Boy, everything was, you know, it had, like, this green tint, right? Everything was, like, one color pretty much. Yes. And then on the NES, there was a very limited color palette they used. Um, but on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, they went to 16-bit, um, so, you know, more clear of a picture. More pixels. and Yeah, more pixels, exactly. Um, and the colors they could use, they could use so much more, like, shading with, and, like, yeah. several more colors so they can create these gradients that you couldn't get on the uh, the original, you know, it's the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And have you have you seen the videos? I I think it's on YouTube. I think it's the Slow Bro guys or the Slow Mo guys. Oh, I love the Slow Mo guys. Yeah. What they did was that they actually took a slow um one of the slow cameras or slow mo cameras, and they put it up to a um to an NES NES. I think I saw this video. Yeah. And you could actually watch as the picture formed because each pixel had to be placed on the screen, and it won. Top down, yeah, like, like form the picture lines. top down scan lines from left to right, and you could watch each pixel being placed, and it was actually such a cool video to watch. Um, so that, but that, yeah, thank you for bringing that because that's a really cool point to see because the scan lines literally get loaded like this. Um, and so yeah, the SNES in 1990, a lot of game, a lot of the games they released on the NES, or some of them, there's a ton of titles on each, but a lot of them. They sent they like came out with games that were like very similar to like ones before. So like for example, Metroid. Metroid was on the NES, but they released Super Metroid on this on the Super N- Nintendo Entertainment System, and it was almost identical to the first game, but just the graphics and some of the things that you can do in the game are just like are updated, and it's it's infinitely better. Like Castlevania, Super Castlevania Four is I think my favorite game on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And it's like the first, you know, it's like the first one, same idea, but it's like, it's a little more freeform and the graphics are, are amazing. The intro sequence is like, and I know I'm going off on a tangent, but like, it really shows like it, I think that is one of the games that really shows like the power of the super, the new system, the super Nintendo entertainment system, just like how like the sounds like I'm even even I haven't even talked about the music yet, but like the sounds, the you know, the shading, like you can really create an environment for, you know, your audience that you're playing that is playing your game. Um and that's just to name a couple. But um after that came the Nintendo sixty four 
1996. Um, and that was cool. Um, I haven't played, I've played a couple games on there. Um, cause my brother again owned one. I played a uh, road rash 64. I don't think that's one that a lot of people know. Um, but legend of Zelda Ocarina of time. I've played some of, um, that was the first legend of Zelda Day game I ever played. Um, have you ever played on a Nintendo 64 before? I have never got to play on Nintendo 64. I've seen them before, of course. Um and I've seen I've seen people play on them. I have played emulators of the Nintendo 64. Oh, okay. But I've never played on one. I've wanted to play on one just to say I have played on one because it's kind of like one of those experiences that a lot of people want to have or a lot of gamers want to have where they play on the classic consoles mm -hmm. to experience what it was like before we've had all these technological advances because yeah you at this point it really is retro gaming yes. even though it was only 25 years ago if you think about that Th things are things are just moving so fast now like with gaming they're really coming out with these amazing you know technological advances again again this year oh yeah like this year not this year but like now nowadays like you know with you know, virtual reality and all these, you know, like 3D gaming, ray tracing, like, yeah. it's crazy. I will say we have hit kind of a slow period, not because we're, not because uh, things are, you know, or well, things are advancing, but the rate at which they are advancing is slowing down mainly due to size. We've hit that point where mm. we yeah. have decrease the size of everything so much that there's only so much we can actually put on a card. I mean, granted, they have a 15 terabyte uh, M.2 drive, which if you don't know what an M.2 drive is, think of a kind of a, um, a thumb drive. Mm -hmm. It's about the size of a thumb drive. And, you know, classic thumb drives, they only have like two gigs, maybe like maybe six. eight gigs. Yeah. 15 terabytes? It's, yeah, that's One crazy. terabyte. Correct me if I'm wrong. One terabyte is what? I think 1,000 gigabytes. I um, Yeah. Do you want me to double check that? Yeah, double check me on that. So. A thousand. Yeah, it's 1,000. That's what so, I thought. I just, I'm double checking it. We went from 8 gigabytes to 15,000 gigabytes on the same yeah. size. That's. It's a very impressive wow. scale. But we are now hitting that limit where we are no longer, we're increasing the graphics, but not at the rate we used to be. Like, you know, we used, we went from, you could see the graphics on Pokemon games and Nintendo games in the late 1990s, early 2000s. And, you know, the graphics, they were amazing at the time, but when compared to games in 2018, 2019, light years away, light yeah. years of difference. But when you compare graphics of games 2018, 2019 to 2021, or even 20, I guess you could say 2017 to 2020, 2021, the difference isn't as big. That's true. That's very true. Okay, so after the GameCube um, came the Nintendo DS um, in 2004. That was my first video game uh, when did the, console. When did the Game Boy Advance come out? The Game Boy Advance... Oh, that came out after the Game Boy Color. So the Game Boy Color came out in 2003, and the Game Boy Advanced 2007. Because I do want to make a correction. Earlier I did say that Pokemon Emerald came out on the, the original Game Boy. Um, it actually came out on the Game Boy Advanced, and that's where you played it on. Okay, okay. You could. There are abilities to emulate it onto a Game Boy Color nowadays, but it originally came out on the Game Boy Advanced. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't cover those two because I don't. I don't think there's too much to talk about with them. I guess just Game Boy Advance just having like you know, much nicer graphics, and some other games. Um, but the Nintendo DS was my first ever console. I played on. Um, they, you know, my sister got one, and then I got one. It was all the rage in kindergarten. Yes, it, it, it really definitely was. was. And then you know that was the, that was where they really like, they they put an emphasis on like, um. What even what was it called? DS what was it called? DS download play? Where you could you could like get two get two Nintendo DSs 
put them next to each other and they could connect and you could play with each other. Oh. Drew, you're going to hate me, but I've, once again, I've never played on a DS. Oh, Actually, okay. I have played on I, a I DS. I played on a DS XL and that was in like... That's very similar though. Eighth grade. Well, it's very similar, but it no longer uses the um the same technology now. It's all Bluetooth. And you mm. all connect via Bluetooth, and someone hosts the game. Well, that's that's what that's what I meant by DS Download Play. That's pretty oh. much what it was. Yeah, Nintendo Wii came out in two thousand and six, I believe. Um, how can we with, help? Yes, how can we help? With so the Wii with its in, with its revolutionary infrared technology, um, you know the Wii remotes and the wireless connecting um, definitely had its had its quirks and bugs at the time, but it was very very. Very, you know, revolutionary for the time. It was also it w- all the rage. Oh yeah, for sure. That was that was probably the console I've had the most time on. Oh, like, definitely. It, it it's definitely you know, with all the movement and stuff, you know, Wii especially sports, Wii sports bowling. Is, yeah. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Wii sports. Yeah, that's where the memories start coming in. I remember getting a Wii for Easter. Mm-hmm. Easter. You get Easter gifts. Yeah. Uh, this well, this was back. This was when we were like. Four and Did you five. get it from the Easter Bunny? Yeah, we got it from actually. Did you find the, it in an egg. The way my parents had it was that they each gave us a clue. Each of uh, my brothers and I, we all got a clue, and it kind of made out a little riddle. And when we solved the oh. riddle, we found the Wii, and it was behind the couch. Aww, oh, that's funny. That's fun. It was, and it was so much fun to play the Wii. It was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of games made their debut on the Wii. Yes, that's true. Um, that was also where I played my first Smash game, was Super Smash Bros. Brawl on the Wii. Um, I still think Super Smash Bros. Brawl is probably the one of the best Smash Bros. games. I think fight me. I, I think no. I think it's great. Um, especially the subspace emissary. That that campaign mode was really really cool, and the fact that you can play with two players is cool too. Um, but yeah. Um, I guess since you're talking about getting that, I think that is going to bring us to the question of the day. Which actually I have three, but um, oh boy, the question of the day um, for each of you for and also one. for everyone listening um, is which three questions is and, and this doesn't have to be Nintendo either. It, and it goes for any console. Um, which console did you grow up with? Or ah. um, so which which console did you grow up with? Um, which console is your favorite um, out of you know all of them? And then what what is your favorite game from that console? Ooh. All right. Um, I've played with a lot of consoles. Um, well, just keep it brief. I'm I'm going to keep it brief. I will say I played with a lot of consoles. I played with PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, um, and currently I'm on PC now. I will say, though, my favorite console is with all my memories is probably the PS2. Okay. The so, PS2 console. And I guess what I meant by which one did you grow up with? I meant, I guess, what was your first video game console you played, uh, I guess? Or is that... or the or very guess, My very first console I actually grew up with was the PS1. Was that, like, what you'd, like, consider yourself growing up with, or was it the PS2? I would say I started out with the PS1, and... But I think I played most of my time on the PS2. Oh, okay. Okay. And honestly, my favorite games to play on the PS2, um, sadly, the Spyro games were only on the PS1, which mm-hmm. if I had to say the PS1 was, I would say Spyro, but we're talking about PS2 right now. So PS2, probably my favorite games to play on the PS2 were the Lego games. Oh, uh, Lego Star yeah. Wars, Lego Indiana Jones, Lego Harry Potter. Those games were my favorite games to play on the PS2. I think that that was a large chunk of my childhood. Okay, and um, for Cassie, I know you didn't grow up. You didn't grow up with any video game consoles. You didn't really grow up playing many video games at all. No, which I think is cool because that's why I love having you on this co- on this episode because it's a different it's a different you know experience and you know the noob from, experience. I wouldn't, say, noob. I wouldn't say no. Noob. I wouldn't say noob. No, so I I didn't grow up with any consoles. I didn't really like ever play games, um, but. Except, like, computer games, I guess. So, see, um, you had a life, and uh, we didn't. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Um, but <laughs> I did. So, life. my best friend growing up, she had a Wii, and I would like to go over to her house, and we would play Wii, and I guess it was, like, Wii sports or something, because I do remember bowling mm-hmm. um, and tennis. 
and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, so that's Wii Sports. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's what I remember. So that's what I would say I grew up with. Um, and I thought it was really cool because you could swing the remote. Um, oh, there was another, yeah, like... Yeah, the, the, the Wii, like, really, like, put an emphasis on motion control. There was, like, a there was like game had a karaoke game that I played in another friend's house once, and I really liked that because you could, like, sing into the remote. Oh, I think I might know. Did it have, like, a microphone? I don't That's remember. interesting. I, I've, I don't know what game that is. I don't I've know never if it's a game, game or maybe it was just a literal like karaoke thing. No, it had to be a game. Was it a game? It had to there be were a like game judges the and they judged you and I love singing, so like I love the game. Oh. And my friend was like, You sing too loud. Um so <laughs> Wait, I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> what I is think it? so. I think so. What is it? Because I don't know what it's called. High school musical? No. Was it a Mario game? No. 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 It was like people. Because there was a Mario singing game. I want to say Mario it's like karaoke. what are those? What are those? Um, like singing shows, like America's Got Talent or um, like The Voice or something. I don't know. I feel like it was a game around those lines. But I like that too. Um, but I, no, I didn't grow up with games very much. Case all case. right. So, um, Cassie, I so I I appreciate that. Um, so what I guess out of all the consoles you've used, what is your favorite? Well, out of the Wii and. The Wii. I think I like the Wii. What about the, the Switch? Oh, I've used the Switch. I don't know if, if that if that counts. I've used Drew's Switch. Well, um, what do you like? Which is your favorite? The Switch. This well, okay. Yeah, I would say the Switch because it's fun and you get to like hold it and like mash buttons. Um, I think it's more, I guess, complex than the Wii. I guess I I really don't have much yeah, experience me. with the Wii. Honestly, at this point, I think I've played on your Switch more often than I did playing on the Wii growing up. Um, but I okay. enjoy it. It's fun and I like the games and yeah. Awesome. So what's your favorite game from Man. the Nintendo Switch? Which we'll get to in a, oh, in, in a, in a couple oh. minutes. Um, but Oh, well, I guess I would say Mario Kart, but I also really like 3D World. And if you want to look... Super Mario 3D World? Super Mario 3D World. And if you want to see Drew and I playing them, go check out Drew's channel. His YouTube channel has a bunch of videos of us working out the whole game. Um, That's right. We're doing Super a 100% playthrough right now. Yeah. Because... Um, Dirty, selfless plug. <laughs> um so but yeah because the, th- the 3ds came out after the after the week oh that was also and then great. that was like that was like they had like this little th- this little notch on the side of the console that was really weird yeah i didn't it, it was like kind like of it. 3d it was weird it kind of messed with my eyes sometimes oh same but it then, you know they had some lot. stuff and then they, then they came out with the wii u which is um I never, I never, I never owned. Wii. My sister owned a 3DS. I did not. We don't it. talk about the Wii U. Yeah, I never we, owned we a Wii U, but it that. had it had some good things. That was where Super Mario 3D World originated. Was on the Wii U. Um, the Wii U brought us good games, but like the, and their their intentions for the Wii U were were very good. You know, they they gave us a screen to play on for handheld games, but you could also make it on the TV. It was a good idea. The Wii U crawled and died so that the Switch could run. I agree with that. And, huh. yeah, honestly, um, yeah, for me, my first impression, the first thing I thought of when I saw the Wii U came out, I was like, it's it looks like it's like a combination of the Wii and a DS because you have, like, a game Oh, pack. that yeah, it really was. That's what I thought it was. And I was like, oh, but it, it was it was, it was was a really cool concept, but it didn't it didn't always, it didn't go exactly how they wanted it to go. Um, no. And... Then and that that was 2012 when that was released, and then in 2017 was when the Nintendo Switch was um, released, and um, that's been also all the rage. Um, I didn't get the Nintendo Switch right away um, when it was released. I got it a couple years later. Um, I got my I got my 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 Nintendo Switch right before um, Super Smash Bros Ultimate came out. Um, and then I've been loving it ever since, um, and I still go back to the old things. And I also have the the Nintendo Entertainment System application and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System application on my Switch, so I can play some of those old games without without having to have the old consoles because I don't own them, and they're pretty expensive nowadays because they're so you know vintage. Vintage, yeah. Which don't get me wrong, I love the vintage stuff all the time. I love like I love playing the old games. That's it's it's really really special, um, but yeah. And I know you don't have a Switch, but I'm I know playing your Switch a lot. Yeah, you've played a you've played a bunch of Switch games. I've thought about getting a Switch, but once again, never pulled the trigger. Um, always putting my my money someplace else. Right. 
like PC parts. And you can always get the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is interesting. Have you heard about that? I have. They came out with the Nintendo Switch Lite, and now they're coming out with the Nintendo Switch Pro, I think. What's the Pro? Right. Um, I haven't heard too much about that yet. Um, 4K display, I think faster frames, higher refresh rate. So it just looks nicer. It, it just it, it's it's like an it's like an upgraded like thing. So upgraded graphics, um, you know, you know, uh, I guess speed, I guess smarter, faster. Oh, will it have um, stronger? <laughs> will it will it have more all new Nintendo? Will products. it have more um memory? Oh yeah, um, because I know I the, think that's the, also that's that's kind of an issue with Nintendo Switch. I think it has like I not think too much memory. So I think they have upgraded the memory. Um. I think That's they good. about doubled it to how much memory is I think what two fifteen gigabytes I to don't or remember, two but it's not too much two fifty to five hundred I think there there is an upgrade memory I will say that okay um, that's good there is another handheld that actually came out or is coming out very soon um, that is I guess you could say to combat the switch which I don't know if you've heard about this but is the sh- it's Steam handheld console. Yes, I've heard of that. Um, it is supposed to combat the Switch because it has all Steam games on it. And mm-hmm. it's actually basically a Switch that runs Steam games. That's super cool. Because the Switch already does run a bunch of games that are I was going to say, because you have Dead Cells on your uh, Yeah, Dead Cells is Switch. a good one. Yeah, um, a lot of stuff. Uh, there's like... I think it's, it's supposed to have like... The graphics are supposed to be that of the uh, Switch Pro. Um, but mm-hmm. it's price. I'm not so. I don't know if they've come out with a price or not yet. But I'm. I am interested to see how that goes. Right. To see if it will overthrow the switch or if it'll just die in the corner. Mm-hmm. Always gotta throw. All right. Steven, you well, gotta throw thank you guys for what. Thank you guys for for listening to the podcast, and thank you guys for joining me. Um, this has been Controller Cast Episode One. I am Drew Weisenborn, your host, and I was joined today by Stephen Bowen and Cassie Cole. Thank you guys so much for joining me um, today. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, Drew. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I hope to get you two, if not at the same time, or at least individually on maybe a couple other episodes um, in the coming months. So, Also, one more shameless plug. Do not forget to check out Drew's YouTube channel. Keep you wise in game. If you are interested <laughs> in watching some gaming content, I am. I do appear on there sometimes. Yeah, you'll, you'll see Steven there's on there. There's some great Cuphead videos with the two oh, of God, them. Oh, God, please. Um, no. There's Minecraft, <laughs> Super Mario 3D World, some League, too. Yeah, I've done a bunch of stuff. I do gaming content. I do uh, some music content. I do, on, on, the, on the off occasion, some like special, like, film skit videos. Um, so, yeah, something I've loved doing for seven years now. So um, so be sure to check that out. But Who's thank you, everyone. Thank you everyone for listening, and good night.